Sippers, welcome to this episode of the Tea With Me podcast with me, Shane Todd. It's episode 132, I think, isn't it? 132. It's a guest episode. We've got one of one of your favourites on, one of my favourites on. Before we get into the episode, let me plug a couple of things. Number one is Patreon. Patreon.com slash Tea With Me podcast. We do a bonus episode on a Monday, live stream on a Friday, and there's exclusive news on things. Also, we're giving away a sponsor product. We're giving away a lawnmower 4.0. A performance package, which is that and other stuff as well from Manscaped. And all you have to do to enter it is, this is like a live and kick when you do competitions. All you have to do to enter it is like the, the YouTube version of this video and comment underneath it. Dan, what's something people have to write? Shave me. Shave me, right? Shave me under it. And we will uh, we will pick someone at random and we'll maybe do a video where we pick names out of a hat or something. And you can win a perfect performance package from Manscaped. We're sponsored by... Thompson's Tea. They've been making tea since 1800s. It's fair to say they fucking love it. When it comes to making tea, they can't get enough of it. They just continue to make... I think they would continue to do it whether they were paid for it or not. That's how passionate they are about tea. They go to places as far away as India. You know, and you... I love tea, but I'd maybe go only as far as, I don't know, Germany. That's how far I'd be willing to, to travel for some tea. But the Thompsons family literally go far and beyond. It's Northern Ireland's number one selling tea. It's top of the pops. Fuck everyone else in the tea game. Punjana leads the way. They make breakfast tea, decaf, whatever sort of tea you want, they've got it for your mouth. They've got your mouth needs taken care of. Punjana. Oh, we love it. We're also sponsored by Manscaped. Manscaped.com. Men's below the belt grooming products stop using old traditional ways of getting rid of your pubic hair you know like uh, like sitting it down and saying you know just is this do you, do you think it's working you know and then expecting them to leave don't do that don't don't tie a bit of string around it and get your data you know close don't tie your pubes around the door handle and get your data slam it that kind of thing all that's all that's old what we're using now is this it's a lawnmower 4.0 wireless charging technology tell me you didn't take a route when i hit that what does that sound like your ma's drawer so uh yeah the lawnmower 4.0 does it all <laughs> i say it all it removes your pubic hair i don't if you're looking for it to make toast it probably won't but if it if anything could it be this they have ball deodorant ball cleanser ball wipes they're thinking about your balls and so am i Go on manscaped.com, use code tea with me at checkout for 20% off and free shipping and take care of your pubes coming into the winter. Speaking of pubes, my guest today <laughs> is the one and only. This guy, I say speaking of pubes, this guy recently travelled to Turkey to have his lasered off before I could tell him about the wonders of Manscaped. Um, this guy is a tea with me favourite. Um, everybody loves him. Pound for pound, just one of the best podcast guests in the universe. He's a friend of mine. He arrived here 40 minutes early because <laughs> the clock in his Jeep is set to the wrong time. He came in during a live podcast and then he just joined in the crack because that's the kind of guy he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's the king of West Belfast, Patrick McDonnell. I'm not technically the king. What are you? More like the fucking unelected Lord Murr. <laughs> Lord Murr? Oh, Lord, Lord Murr. <laughs> I would Lord Murr feel, of Belfast feels like the sort of thing they just give to any like I imagine back in the day it was really important but now they're like if you're in work experience here you're the Lord Mayor I would love to see you as Lord Mayor of Belfast well, yeah. I know a couple of the Lord Mayors there's been but one of my mates actually was Lord Mayor but yeah. he was only Lord Mayor for half a year right why? because the other one became an MP and couldn't be a Lord Mayor an MP right right so then they says no look we'll give it to him so he got like a half a year that's probably enough isn't it I don't know do you think you get cool stuff being Lord Mayor oh wow, I completely like, like what what, do you, what would you be getting do you get like Smokies no huh Smokies what's that you don't know what a Smokie is <laughs> no have you ever had a Smokie oh I hope not <laughs> <laughs> see some people would think when you say a Smokie that you, it's a it's a sexual thing it's not yeah it's actually where you put ice cream and ice cream soda in together do you know Victor Oreo and <laughs> Yeah, but that's not how you say his name. <laughs> what do you say his name? What's his name? Vittorio Angeloni. 
What did I say? Victorio Ornone, I think. <laughs> no, I didn't. I said Zangelone. Okay. But uh, his granda invented it in his ice cream parlor in the falls. That is great trivia. When you said a smoky, it sounds like... Yeah, it sounds like you're getting You know, like dinner blowjob. ladies, they talk like that. It sounds like they, if they were giving you a yeah, blowjob. Come on down, I'll give you a smoky. I'll give you a smoky, <laughs> son. <laughs> no, well, it's... it's um. It's when you put laminated and ice cream together and then you crumble flake over the froth on the top. Isn't it nice? Fucking great. Yeah? Yep. 100%. You should try it. Try a smoke. Go ring her now and say, listen, I ain't getting a smoke in it. Smoky? And listen, if she smoky? takes it the wrong way too, it's smoky your quids in. in. Um, look, there's loads I want to chat to you about tonight. Uh, today, you're doing a gig with Paul Gascoigne. want to talk a wee bit about that. I'm sure there's a lot we'll cover, but... The main thing I want to ask you is this. Gigs are back on again. We've been out and about. We've been enjoying ourselves. We're doing shows. It's opening up again. But what have you been up for the last few weeks? I haven't really seen you. Well, you I've seen you at the old gig, but like I felt when I saw you at Lavery's, I felt like I hadn't seen you in a while. Right. So I just wonder if there was anything new or... Like what? Business ventures or... I don't know, like... Who's been fucking touting that today? I don't know. <laughs> Because it, it seems like it's like an interview, you know, we're like, oh, no, we're not printing anything bad about you, but what the fuck have you been at, you know? I don't know, I I, I, I suppose, every, like, gigging started up again and all, and then there was a weird night of Lavery's where, like, it had been back for a couple of weeks, and then you were there, William, there was, like, quite a lot of people backstage, and I was like, it feels like this is really back. Oh, it's good. I don't know that. why it was weird, it was just a night, it was a nice that time. That felt proper. It felt proper. It felt like proper, the indoor stuff is, is properly back. Yeah, so, well, I've been doing it the whole way through it. Let's face it, like, you know I mean? it got to the stage where there was, um, you were only allowed a comedian at a wedding. That's right. So I don't quit about them with some fucking things up there, have I? What about whenever that, I'm sure I've talked about it in the podcast before, but when, you, when we were in Lorne, and then you double booked, <laughs> and I had to drive you to Palomino. Palomino from Lorne. But it was good, that was, and, you, and, and, and we got there really late. I should have given you a smoky fat. Yeah, you should. You should have. You owe me a smoke. <laughs> we got there really late, and it was like it I was mad to be on at eight o'clock, and we got there at half ten, I think. And I didn't go on till like quarter to eleven. And it sounded wild inside, and I was like, "This is gonna be the worst ever." And then an hour later, you came back out. You're like, "That was great." It was unreal. It was as if like they had just waited for it. It was. I panicked because I thought at that stage they were all gonna be far too drunk. Yeah. But they just all sat there and just listened, and it was just amazing. Have you done any out of the ordinary gigs in the last few weeks, or a month or so? Like, have you done anything not comedy clubs? Like, yeah, done the boxing. It was fucking horrendous. So I get a, a set at a boxing a set event in between, yeah, boxing fights, and it was just horrendous. But that always sounds like it's going to be. You know I what know. I mean? Did you? But I had you, done you know one in the Maldron like four weeks before. And right. it went well. Right. So obviously then these other promoters found out about it and were like, this really worked. Right. And, you know, so they got me in. Were you doing a set or were you chatting to people in the audience? I was sort of planning thing? to do a set. Why would then, so say if it was me, if I was promoter of a boxing event and it was happening in Devonish, I'd just get you to host a night. Yeah. I wouldn't say like do a set. I'd say like present the well, whole thing. Well, I had thing. Chris Souter doing that. Right. So he was already doing that. So it was like, here we go, he's all ready, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is like a rave. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. a reason why comedians don't do gigs in the nightclub. Yeah. Because no fuckers listening, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just, it was mental. I, d I don't think I would do one again. No. The uh, the last time we did a gig together was, what the, was the Devon? Was the Fela? I no. don't know if you've been on since then. No, I've done my show in the Limelight. The Limelight. That was great. Two weeks ago, Shane. Yeah, fair. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it all it all blends into one for me at the minute. Okay. I just I'm trying to figure out when the last time I had you on was. On this? Yeah. A couple of months. That was one half an hour ago we came back. I well apart from that live stream. <laughs> the Fela gigs were ten out of ten. That was They were great, yeah. Unbelievable. Really, really good. So uh, like the right it was the right kind of like wild. It was like a wee bit wild, but like totally respectful I and I think what, what are you trying to hint like at my gigs have changed because from lockdown, the, the profiles, or that, was that what you mean? Like, or No, 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 I just mean that, that audience was unbelievable. Yeah. Like, as in they were really up for it. I think it, I think you'll find out when you sell a show as yourself. Mm. Do you know, like, if I was going to do support on a show with you... Or a comedy with night. You, 
I know that it's for you. Do you, do you, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, when I yeah, don't yeah. warm up for you during a wedding, yeah, I go on literally do ten minutes, and I and I'm on and off because I know well the book's in. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. already here to do the warm up. Yeah, do you know what I mean. Yeah. So I think when people go to see you, I think that's what they have in their head, and then I think the good thing about that was a lot of people have bought them tickets after we done the first podcast, podcast. which and feels like years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Really, really, and which obviously just fucking blew yeah. up for for me, and uh, got you to sell at the SSE. And <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know? I, I was talking about this the other day. It's really strange, but this place doesn't change, right? Because the most questions I get asked about comedy is about you and Colin Gattis, and they go, "Is he a Protestant?" Yeah, yeah. I've told you this before. That and what school did you go to? That's all people want to know. Yeah. It's all people want to know. Is he a Fenian? Yeah. Is he, is he a prod, is he? What's he like? Is and he you in just, a band? Is you he... just tell them the honest answer. I just which say, is... listen, Shane was in a UDF band and all. Like when, yeah. I was, when I first met him, but he's Catholic. he was just this kid, <laughs> just this kid on the street. That's... He just loves the flute band. He just loved the flute band. He just yeah. loved music. So yeah. he just joined. What what gig would you not do? Let, let me run a couple of scenarios by you, right? I phone in you up and you just tell me if you would do a set at it. So I phone you up and go, and you don't know me, I'm not I'm not me, right? I'm a guy called Brian, right? I go, hello, is that Paddy? Hi, yeah. Paddy, my name's Brian. Hi, hey, Brian. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get my number? You can't. I got your number from William Thompson. He's a wee fucker. Paddy, we're, I'm running gigs in Dundonald Ice Bowl. Saturday afternoons, we've got the stay, you know where the DJ booth used to be? We want during the speed skating, we want 10 minutes of stand-up. Um, and the money's like going right um, would you be willing to come and do 10 minutes in Donald Ice Bowl on a Saturday afternoon can my kids skate while I'm doing it 100% oh, I'm doing it <laughs> <laughs> that's the dream that one day people are skating around in Donald Ice Bowl on a Saturday afternoon and you're on stage and would you do like would you sanitise the set Would you, or would you just do the normal set Brian goes Paddy it's up to you Nah, I would clean it up. Like, yeah, yeah, I definitely would. See, I think you'd want to clean it up, but then you just couldn't help it. Well, look, if somebody's being a cunt, I'm gonna say that. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just some like, kid. Just, hey, that's new. We can't fuck off. <laughs> My dad, fucking garbage, dad. <laughs> it's it's became a thing where kids, I say kids, adults are coming up to me now who are young compared to me, and saying you're my dad. It's became a thing. Yeah, you're my dad. It's like it's like. You know where people would have went up your body blender or fucking, uh, do you know what I mean? Or yeah. go up to you and go, hi, what's crack? Like, do you know what I mean? Mike McGoldrick. Yeah. They come up to me and go, you're my dad. And it's, it's like a fucking joke. And I'm like, no, seriously, like, you need to stab this because DNA tests are a fucking fortune. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's the hit rate on a being? One out of five? Well, they have to be a certain age. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Someone comes up and says it to you and you're like, ah, dead on, but you're doing miles in your head. Yeah, go on. Like, what age you, where do I think I would have been then? Yeah. Because, I mean, if someone says, you know, my ma lived in Belfast, late 90s, you can't, you're not going to be able to rule that out. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to go on. Someone says, my ma from Belfast, late 90s, you go, well, son, get over here. <laughs> so there's this one. She says, uh, yeah, my mummy told me you're my daddy. And I was like, well, how'd she come to that? And she says, well, she says you used her like a puppet in the party. <laughs> and I turned around to William and I says, even if she is mine, I'm not fucking going to hear her because it's just been brought up like that. And then we were like, well, I need to see a picture of your mummy. And she went, you don't need to. She's sitting over there. Jesus Christ. It was just a girl with one arm waving at me. <laughs> I was like, fucking hell. I would like you to do, in like a year's time, you find all these kids that come up to you and say that, and then you do a gig for them. And that's the show. That's a Netflix special. So what they should do is... Get it's called I'm Your Dad. Who wants, to be, who wants to be the Dagger son or something? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Dagger Dick Jr. Call it Dagger Dick Jr. No, what you know that thing the uh, the sword and the stone. Uh, it's the da it's the dagger, dagger and the stone. stone. And people come up and if they can pull just the dagger be like out, Donald you're Trump and the Apprentice America, and just like, do you want to be my fucking? Do you want to be my son? Do you want to be my daughter? <laughs> fucking make people laugh. You can't. Do I don't think that's no, how the Apprentice send, works. Send 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 them on task. Like they had to do a fake run. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? They have to have a have a bus. If I if I. Found out you you were my dad actually. Mm -hmm. Would you take care of me? 
No, because you're past the age of that. Oh. But it would, it'd be mad, like all the wee young kids that have in the house now going, who's the big hurry, man? You know? Oh, it's not me. That's, <laughs> Dave Elliott. That's right, he's just man. Fucking skip. <laughs> that was Dave Elliott. <laughs> Why'd you bring Dave with you? Oh, if I'm staying here, Ms. Boba. <laughs> um, it'd be mental, wouldn't it? It'd be mental. Used, used, used me like a, used you like a puppet at a party? Yeah. Hmm. It takes a while to figure it out, but when you do, it's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's your one arm. Well, I could only see one arm, which is weird, that man. So I just put it to their mouth, like putting their hands places so where she shouldn't have been, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Either Alice, she was caught stealing in Turkey, one of the fucking two, do you know what I mean? <laughs> caught stealing in Turkey. Um, what, now that we're, we are doing gigs again, the indoor stuff, you've been, we've been told that's happening and got to do the limelight shows, you got your eye on doing anything like out of the ordinary, anything different, anything you go like, yeah, I wouldn't actually mind trying this, where it's a type of show or acting or anything at all. Is there anything different you want to try? There's nothing really that I've thought about. I mean, I always did try different stuff. I don't know if you remember. Like, I used to do comedy in the buses and I yeah, used to yeah. do... So I'd done all that quirky stuff before it was, yeah. you know... Anything else? I don't anything. I think you could write a great play about growing up characters you've met. I think there's a great play in that. Mm. And I like to well, direct it the in tools, a pull neck. On the tools, on the tools, I did speak to somebody here about doing a theatre version of that. Yeah. Whereas it's like, like a one man play. Yes, it's a one man play, basically. With that's sort of want the setup to sort of be sort of like stud walls and like it's me on my tee telling stories tell somebody who's working with me see when you were on site did you take a lot of tea breaks who's been talking <laughs> I could see I could see you taking a tea break I was do you know I was talking about this today because it was like a famous thing where one of the jobs I had in the town I ended up being the John Reformer right. so f- running it for a guy and part of the deal was he wasn't allowed to take my tea breaks and lunch breaks off me because right. you're self employed they obviously will say right well we'll give you Twenty pound an hour, but we're taking your tea breaks and your thing. Tea breaks are fifteen and fifteen if you're doing a twelve hour shift and a half an hour. Right. Whereas it takes you fifteen to walk around the shop. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So it was like a famous thing that I got an hour tea break in the morning, an hour tea, an hour lunch break, and then an hour in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. So technically, I was three hours of tea. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it was a famous thing, but right. it does take you fifteen minutes to walk the shop and back again. Yeah. Where's my new job here? I couldn't get away with it. Like it's literally a fifteen minute tea break. Were you on set? Were you like good on site? Were you put the work in, or when you're on site with loads of different people, could you? Would there be days where you're like? Mm, it always nice. got to the stage where I was just, you were end up delegating. So earlier you had to deal with a client, deal with a thing, and then you were delegating another man. For some reason, I was always good at that. Do you think I could survive on a building site? Huh? You think so? Only because I know ye. Right, right, right. Built and sites are very much like prison. Right. There's you a fucking bombed? structure. All oh, right. You can't get bombed, <laughs> but I mean, there's a structure. <laughs> I love that you're showing something around your first day. So you do this, you got 15 minute tea break. But you want to get bombed? You can get bombed. We've got that too. See, to be honest with you, built and sites are just really for people that never fully grew up properly. Right. Do you know what I mean? It's like school. Yeah. Do you know what like, Think of a rough school. Right. Maybe you didn't go to one, right? Look at me. I know. But a rough school, that's <laughs> was, basically what the building said. It was rough on Hummus. Like, see when I menu. worked in the movie sets, like there was a Mr. Green, a Mr. White, a Mr. Blue. And I was like, why are they called that? And they were like, think about it. And it was, that was your drugs. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you had fucking the bullies. Then you had the people that could get you whatever you wanted. Do you know what I mean? Because those movie sets are like their own world. There's so many people. Yes. So it's like a community. Like yeah, but built sites are like that too. Right. Unless it's a wee tiny built set. So on most built sites, is there a guy who can get you gear? Most painters are drug dealers. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make or get something, go That's to a painter. No so they are <laughs> the painters on the sets are the ones that do all the stealing and do all that they're fucking mustard that's why they don't have MVQs or nothing you can't do an MVQ and paint and decorate because 
you can't do it when you're in jail. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like uh, I've never met a but painter. But not all of them. No, the mall shit. <laughs> I'm fucking painting them all with the same brush. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, the the, the the dreads of community, like, although... <laughs> what have you got against painters? <laughs> they're fuckers. <laughs> they really are. And they fucking have no no qualifications and they run about the sites like they're fucking important. We cover up all your bad work. Do the fuck. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, not really, but... Um. <laughs> <laughs> See, you've never been on a site, so you don't really know no. what it's like. I would say... On a, a bit like G, like what they would tell you about jail, I'd say on a site you have to be able to give a slagging and take a slagging to like be on a site at all. There's no thought about mental health or anything like that. Like, yeah. there's nothing like that. See, in in construction, people have no idea. It's like back in the fucking dark ages. It yeah, really yeah. is. And you can be from one place to another. You have no rights. You have no. Although there's health and safety executive, but see up here compared to other places, like. But what I'm saying is, if if you're like the new guy on site and like you're young whatever you probably get the complete piss ripped out of you the mad thing about it like see what you're saying there like see we lads getting their eyebrows done now yeah like there's a lot more of that in the younger generations it's fucking like they get absolutely tortured because so many of those there's that uh, Facebook page on the tools or something and it's like you know banter on the building site loads of it looks staged you know like all this set up stuff like the, we're pranking the new guy but I'd say there is quite a lot of that sort of stuff that happens. Oh, mid, like guys in their mid fifties, like. And then there's a lot of people that don't have any fucking thought process, so yeah. it's dangerous too. A lot of people get hurt on them. Yeah, by people. We fill this guy's mouth with concrete. Oh, like, what? You're on trap a breeze, black his head. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and you're like, no, no, it's not good. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? There is a lot. Well, of what age did you start working on a side at? My dad used to make me, when I wasn't in Donegal in the summer, go into sites with him. So from maybe 11, 12. Doing like labour, like just fucking about. about and, like, yeah, do yeah. you know what I mean? So um, it was just basically to keep me off the streets. And I would have just been in it, just lifting stuff and carrying stuff for people. What's but, the funniest thing you've ever seen inside? That's a hard one to say. In what way? Like... I don't know, I just imagine it lends itself to like, like you say, like, well, your show on the tools is kind of yeah. about, you know, your time. So that's, I don't want to give away some oh, of that okay, stuff, do you, you know what you, I mean? You, so you. it's, yeah. like, there's a lot, and I told you when I read it, like, there's two and a half shows that yeah. I can do, like, the first night I done an hour and a half, and yeah. I was like, that's far too long, Yeah. and I never got everything done, so it's, and I haven't even scratched the surface, do you yeah. know, there's so much, Yeah. that there's going to be, like, a series of shows about it. Yeah. I think there's a TV programme on it, like, to be honest with you, there really is. Yeah, that, I mean, I could easily be a sitcom, yeah. just set on a building site. Yeah, it could be. But mad things happening, like, you know, we've seen from a guy putting a... There was a guy who was an electrician who bought a, a, a wood carving blade. Right. Something that you would carve, like, fucking eagles and things of wood and seen it and thought, I'm going to buy one of them for myself and put it in my grinder to cut wood on site. He's, he's an electrician. Right. And he cut his hand off. Oh. What did he think was going to happen? <laughs> Pretty grim seeing the hand sitting on the ground like in the site in Belfast. You were there? Yeah. So like I didn't see him physically do it but I came in after it and I was sitting and there no, and I was like, is no nobody going to lift away? it? Is yeah. nobody, well that's my, I was like, is nobody going to give him a hand there? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was like, is nobody going to lift it and nobody wanted to lift it and I was like, for fuck's sake lads. And they ended up, was a, one of four men, ex rugby guy, he lifted it like. Right. Um, but the uh, fucking man. You said ex rugby guy, like that would lend itself <laughs> to him being able to lift it up. No, just it was just in my head, right. thought process. And thinking he got down like behind a scrum and <laughs> threw it to you and yeah. you kicked it over a. Yeah, I totally loomed it up the fucking <laughs> Ulster Hospital for him. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you see mad things on site and stuff. But as I said, I don't want to give too many yeah, stories yeah, away yeah. because it's in the show and stuff yeah. like that. But they're fucking, What was your first job? Not on the site, like when you were like a kid, like part time, or I collected money for the coma. You collected what at what age? Like 12 or 13. So he, he leaves quarter house, you knock after so a day or two. So hard long ago was cold, like do you know oh, what I mean? Geez, yeah. So I was like, so it was 1993. Coal men were always old and tiny as well, but carrying the biggest bags of coal, yeah, on their back, 
But they were always tiny men. Well, I think most people were tiny in Ireland after the fucking famine, weren't they? Do you know what I mean? Like, the height of people went down, so people were got tiny. After the famine? Yeah. No nutrition. Can we check mate. that out? No nutrition. <laughs> no nutrition. Like, 100%. People from Kerry were fucking six and a half, seven foot <laughs> prior to the famine. No. They were. No. I'm fucking dead. No. Check it out there on the internet. Okay, you're saying check it out. Like, we're going to find that the average height of someone in Kerry before the no. phone was seven foot. Put into the thing and say, there's a lot of things, illnesses and stuff came about after the famine. Yeah. Oh, no, I totally, I'm on board there. Right, so why would people not get smaller if they didn't have nutrition when well, they were You're kids? saying that they're an average of seven foot. Now, I imagine most people are an average of about five, seven. So you're saying they lost, like, over a foot and a half? He still maybe had seven foot people, but not that many of them, do you know what I mean? <laughs> people have got taller. Five inches. Since the famine. 1914? The fucking famine was in 17 fucking 60 years. In the last hundred years, people have got taller. Right. <laughs> <laughs> in the last hundred years, they've got taller. Yeah. On a gradual thing, like... <laughs> Because it started in probably again. It's, <laughs> it's not linked Where to spuds. Where was the famine? The famine was in the 1840s. I don't think height is linked to spuds. Put in and see if the... Someone please put in exactly what he's going to say. Did the height of people in Ireland drop after the famine? <laughs> What's the first line on that? Individuals born in heavily affected areas experience no measurable stunted growth. Ah, oh, for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote Dan. that? Was that a fucking painter wrote that? Dan, Dan Google are all painters coke dealers. <laughs> uh, I, I think about PhD back The farm would have been a shit time, wouldn't it? I don't know. There was plenty of bonds he bones, man. <laughs> Take people and fucking Oh Jesus Can't get the pen She bones <laughs> uh, What was my, my My first job was dish, I was dishwasher I loved it Great crack Being in a It's obviously not As difficult In any way As being on a site But being in like A, a kitchen Of a restaurant Was that all it was You weren't in a bar Or anything there was a bar, but it was different staff. Right, okay. So we were just, like, in the kitchen, and it was, it was busy, like... Double you're bit of crack. You are working with mates. The chefs are always brilliant crack. Chefs are all fun. rockets, aren't they? The hours they work are ridiculous. A lot, lot of them and have the drinking money. problems. Yeah, they all have, are gambling, <laughs> or fucking, like... I said, and I, and I went to retract that. I was like, they all, a lot of them have drinking problems. You went, they all do and have gambling problems. <laughs> and they are, and I know some guys who are chefs. Like, God love them, like, because if the fucking work every day that you don't want the work. In the heat as well. Like, and then clean the up at the end of it. Pressure. Well, the, that, that was good. where I worked. We did all the cleaning for them. So you were at, at, when they finished their shift. Now, they're probably prepping food and all for the next day. But, like, they're working ridiculously. Ridiculous shit. And the money shit. Yeah, yeah. If you're a chef, like yeah. really shit. And I think even if you had a passion for food, the restaurant we were working at, it wasn't like a real food place. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, it's not chicken like nuggets the, and chips, sir. Yeah, it was, it was It was like decent food, but it, it just wasn't. Yeah. I, I, I wasn't seeing what they were getting from it, no, other than like a wage, obviously. Yeah. And and uh, the weird thing I remember thinking back to, I, was where I started working when I was like 15. Everybody would have after every shift, a drink, sit in the restaurant whenever everyone left and have a drink. And now I'm looking back and I'm like, why did you not just want to go home straight away? But it was a culture. It was like, we'll have a, you know, I, we, I had one pint, but they would add a few. You know, it was a weird, like, all-in business of, like, mad art. I was just working there part-time when I was a kid, like, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was brilliant crack. And the chefs, if they were in a good mood, mood would make you anything you want to eat. Oh, which that was, was amazing. class that you could that get whatever amazing. you want, yeah. Plus, the guy, one of the guys was called Frankie, who used to live bang in city centre. Uh, you know the Tesco's is on Dublin Road? Mm -hmm. He lived, like, in behind that. And I guarantee you know him somehow. I don't know his surname. But, um, but he was a chef. And he would, if you bought a Mars bar in the in the bar, he would make you a battered Mars bar. But, like, the fanciest kind. Like, he'd do powdered sugar over the top of it. No, it was unreal. I love working. Like, I might just, after SSA, I might just quit comedy. Get back in. Get back on the dishes, like. Glass clacking. Hmm? Glass clacking. 
glass collect. I never did glass. It didn't actually work in the bar, but uh, but yeah, fuck, I love working. On it. There's a great crack when you were a kid and you were earning working money in, working in, in an a adult job. environment. Yeah. yeah, and and you're getting paid for it. Yeah, I done the cold, and it was mad because that was the first sort of times where I experienced where. You went to the door and there was like a girl in a nightdress going, can you not go and get the cold man to come and see me? And oh, you were yeah, like, the cold, what? Man, the cold man was cleaning up? And she was like, go and get him. Go and get Pocky out of the lorry. Tell him I want to speak to him. I'll sort him out. And I was like, what do you mean? And then you were over and like, Pocky would have went, you go over and tell her, just give me the money. I don't want my dick sucked. You know, and I was cold like. F- this, are you saying there was a call for dude? Call for dude? Oh, fuck's sake, mate. Anything, they'll do anything not to pay it's West Belfast, like, do you know what I mean? But you, so you were going and collecting the money, right? But did you ever, like, did it ever turn into, like, you being, like, a Sopranos kind? Like, were you ever, did you sort of develop? Uh, we made us wear a wee suit and white and black shoes and stuff. <laughs> and put on, like, a New York accent. It was like, you gotta pay me for the fucking cold, man. We trilby on the side. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you're fucking to... four weeks behind, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, did anyone give you shit doing that? Because you were like, no, I was only a kid, clacked money, right? But I just remember constantly, like he had a list of people, and he was like, that's it, I'm fucking, I don't give a fuck, I'm saying the chanty, no more fucking cold, I don't give a fuck, and the concert freezing, and the loads of kids, he's in the fucking bar every night, that fucking bastard, I can't fucking be in the bar every night, I'm fucking delivering him fucking cold, he can't fucking pay me, and he's like. All right, you know, I was like 13, so yeah. it was the first real experience of like dealing with people or rapping doors for that. What'd you do after that? Then I got a job in a bar, the bar where I lost my finger, eventually where I became a doorman. I got a job in it as a glass collector, and it was mental because it was like 14 of my mates all worked in it, so it was like a list to get in here, right? Right, and then it was just the first night. It's like a three-story house, like two houses together. And the first night I started on it, I was going with a girl and they came down to her house and wrapped the door and were like, it's part of because we can get them in now because somebody didn't turn in. And she was like, I don't want you to work there. And I was like, fucking sure, it's good money. It was like 35 quid a shift. Right, and right. And for a kid back then, it was like, you do three shifts. Yeah. Fucking good money. Yeah. So I went up and started. It was a Sunday night. It was in the middle of winter. And they, they stored all the beer on the middle of the roof on like a flat part under tarpaulins and my mates went right your turn to go out there you go out and have a good time and they locked the door from inside and they give me a, a like a bottle opener and I'm standing in a fucking shirt in the middle of winter <laughs> on a roof where it's raining and snow where was it like what part of Belfast was it? West Belfast right. and I'm going this isn't a good time I you know I wouldn't thank you for a drink, you know what I mean? So they came back after like 45 minutes and I was near fucking dead. <laughs> and they were like, do you drink plenty? And I was like, no, I fucking didn't. I'm fucking freezing, these bastards. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it did one night. It got to the stage where I got that drunk one night. And I was working. Be, yeah. And I had, I was a barman by a stage. I was like 16 or something. And uh, I was pulling pints and I was working the top floor and I got that drunk. Maybe had three pints or something and I collapsed in the toilet. And they locked the bar up. And I woke up and it was like half three in the morning. So you always hear stories of people waking up, falling asleep on a night out, not like working, uh-huh. like you say, but people who are like, I was, I went for a shit in the night out and woke up, it was the morning. I didn't know that actually happened. That was actually a thing. So I was on the top floor. So this is like a three-story house and there was like two houses knocked together. And I had went into the wee toilet. So it was like a function was in there and then they had all left and everybody just thought I went home. Right. But right. I went into the toilet and waited yeah collapsed and uh woke up about half three it was all dark and i was like where the fuck am i yeah got my burns walked out get into the fire escape and could see with one window right i'm in the bar and i went the only way out of here is to go down and out the exit door so when i get down and i hit the exit door open the alarms went off the whole place and i was like i'm not hanging about because he'll think i broke in right yeah yeah so i run home and then the next day the fucking owner phoned me up and he says you need to come and I was like yeah I'll be down now you know it's not my shift he says I need to speak to you he went down he showed me the cameras it was me but he says I can see it was you and he says what happened and I says I just I fell asleep in the toilet he says that's dead on that means you worked hard right. and he didn't sack me <laughs> and they were all like what did you do to get away with that and I was like no and they were like yeah dead on all you need to do is waity and he'll think you're a legend <laughs> he just was like no he must have worked hard fucking didn't. so he let me away but he was sound Someone on a podcast recently said about, have you ever been in an abandoned house when you were a kid? I did once and hated it. I hated that feeling of like being somewhere you shouldn't. 
Did you ever go into a band house? What'd you get up to? We would have went in the abandoned houses and flats and just all the boys and drank and brought girls in them. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't relax in that environment. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where we grew up, it was like a normal thing. Yeah. We were really scared of getting caught by the cops or anything like that because it was like a fucking... You were just... You grew up, yeah. it, do you know what I mean? It wasn't really a big deal. Well, what do you remember that... An early thing where you got into a lot of shit for. Like, would your mum and dad have been like easy going enough when you were getting into like a bit of bother doing this or that? My man, dad would have got you kneecapped if you'd done something bad. Right. What so was the first hid, day? You hid everything from them. What was something you did where you were like, oh fuck, I'm, I'm in the shit here? Anything from school? Like, is it when yeah, you. Yeah, I, I beat the teacher with a meter stick. But he beat me with the first. <laughs> so there's a teacher we had called Jesus. And he looked like Jesus. Did he teach your E? No, he taught technology. But he dressed like the 70s. Do you know what I mean? He was like a real hippie sort of dude. But he done karate. He was like a four or five down. But we did things called the ducks where there used to be storage units. And they opened it all up and everybody went in there and smoked. So he would run in one end with a big meter stick. Right. And it used to be like a game to see how hard you were. We'd just stand there and smoke. So this day here, I didn't see him coming in. And everybody fucking run. I was doing something. I was fiddling about. Probably fucking rolling a fag or something. And the next minute, he came flying in and hit me across the back of the legs. Like, full on. And I wanted to cry. But I didn't want to cry in front of everybody. Yeah. So I was like, fuck. And it was really, really sore. And I remember going home. And I was going, hey, my, my trousers are catching here. From. He'd cut my two legs open. He'd hit me that hard that the trousers and the hard blood had stuck. And when I got home and looked at it, I went, I ain't going to get him fat. That's, you know, I'm not that in my way, but. So Can I, I got, just say, as much as me and you are really good mates, I hope I never do something to make you say to yourself, I'm going to get him for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got a meter stick and I told everybody, was, all my mates, what I was going to do. So he run in and I hid and then I came in behind him. And when he stood and the whole school was looking at him, I came behind him and walloped him and he just went down on his knees. And I then at that stage went, I fucked up. <laughs> and I run out of school. And I remember everybody in school like banging the windows and all. And I run out. And I got to the house and I couldn't breathe. My mummy was a teacher, so my dad was a roofer. He rang her to come to the house. And she came up to the house and she was like, what happened? And I told her. And she was like, oh my God, no. So they rang the school. The school says, we're phoning the police. And my mummy went, right. He's killed Jesus. Yeah, well, he slapped Jesus across the back of the leg with a meter stick. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Technically, it's not the first time he's fell down with a bit of wood in his back, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I then, at that stage, went, well, I need to show you what he done to me. And when I showed my man and dad my legs and the scene what he had done previously, yeah. they went, hold on a wee minute. So she put me in the car and up to the school. And yeah. they were like, look at that man laying in there. He's laying in there in the lollipop man's room. You know, his legs is bond janks. And the Christian brother was like, we're going to have to phone the police in this one. This is assault and all. My mom went, well, see before you do, let's see this. And she says, show them. And I showed them my legs. And they went, you got to be careful. Where did that happen? And here's me, he done it the other day. And they went, okay. And they didn't spoke to him. And then they were like, oh, well, maybe we can leave the police out of this and we can deal with it internally. And then I just remember crying and freaking out. And then after that, my mates were smoking blow in school. And I was with them. I genuinely wasn't smoking blow with them. <laughs> I'm not your teacher. <laughs> right? Genuinely wasn't, because I would admit it. But I was with them, and I wouldn't tout. So then a science teacher called us, and he called us up. And he was like, he's a local fella, so he was sort of like, lads, I know the crack. Like, yeah. But I am a teacher. I have to tell the principal. And I was like, fuck, so we went up to the principal. And he was like, were you smoking it? And I was like, no. And he says, we involved in it. And I says, I was with them. She says, right, I'm sending the letter home. And I mean, that's all right. So on the Saturday morning, my dad, get down the stairs. And I was like, fuck, here we go. Down the stairs. And my mom was like, I can't back you up in this one now. You're wrong. And I went, look, technically I wasn't doing it, but my mates were. And here's my dad, what type of mates are you hanging about with just doing this? And I went, oh, come on, it's not that bad. And he went, sniffing, sniffing gas. And I went, sniffing gas? And I wasn't sniffing fuck gas. Says he had in the letter. And I looked at him, I wasn't sniffing gas. Give me out. 
did the school get it wrong? Me, all right, fucking right, did it? And he goes, that's all right, but then we'll, we'll contact the school on Monday. I was going to kill you. And I was like, no. He says, why, what, what do you think you were getting a letter sent for? Hey, me smoking dope. <laughs> That <laughs> just fucking just you remember him reaching across the table and punching me and me, but I wasn't doing that too. I right, dead on. You weren't doing that. But it turned out there was two wee lads who were sniffing the gas out of the bonds and burners. Holy shit. Yeah. So they were sniffing that, so the letters get mixed up. Right, right, right. But um <laughs> That's probably it. Like there's other stuff but I wouldn't talk about that live, you know what I mean? We're not live? No, but you know what I mean. Yeah. I don't want anybody to know about that. Oh, okay. The wife's given off because so much is being spoken about that the kids are now known about it in school. Do you know what I mean? Your kids just waiting for technology teachers with samurai swords. Uh, <laughs> don't think I I got into shit in school, but just for I was the ultimate wrong place, wrong time guy. Uh huh. I was with people, like you say, with people who were doing like smoking or smoking weed. But I was a nerd, like I wasn't doing that. Uh huh. But I would have been with them. And if any, now, like. Oh yeah, daily now. Yeah. But if anyone would get caught, it would be me. Yeah, the one person who wasn't doing it. Uh huh. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And I remember, uh, I remember everyone getting caught for smoking near like this lake in school, and everyone got brought into the principal's office, and he was a nightmare, evil guy. And he goes, "Right, you've been all been smoking." And I said, "I, I said I actually wasn't." And he goes, uh, "You were, you were all caught smoking. You all stink of smoke." And I took my inhaler out, and he said. Fuck off with that inhaler, and I don't know why, but that sentence re- it was a situation where you shouldn't laugh, and it really made me laugh. And he said it, and in, the yeah. nerves went, and I got more for laugh, and I got in more trouble than anyone did. But I would have flipped easy, like, yeah, you know, in terms of like giving people up, yeah, so I flipped Tight. a sec, mate. The ultimate, like, Judas. Like, I remember being in P5, and there was this kid called Ross who's getting too big for his boots, he, he was wearing a gladiator's cap. TV show official merch. He was coming in with that gladiator's cap. Oh, like the gladiator's TV you show. You were my first whistle. Yep. Yeah. He's coming in. I was actually very good. He's coming in with this black gladiator's cap. My auntie was at the show and all. And I was like, he needs to be taken down a peg or two. And uh, this guy, Chris McBride. Um, Pure cunt. Goes, no, lovely guy. But honestly, I can't explain to you. This, ki- this kid, Ross, rubbing everyone's face with the gladiator's cap. This was in gladiator's cap's peak. Chris goes, me and another boy, we're going to nick his cup. And I went, yeah, do it. I said, I'm, I'm, I don't want to be part of it. And they went, right, well, we're going to nick it. And they threw it into it. They took it from his bag. And then on their way out of school, they threw it into like an old coal shed or something in the school, Strand Town Primary School, on the way out. And He's uh, a mad bastard in school. Can you yeah, tell me about it? Man, tell me about I'm it. I'm glad I didn't go early. Like, that right? would have been nuts. Teacher calls in the next day. A couple of girls in the class saw these boys stealing the cab. Knew I was mates with them, so I was involved somehow. And the uh, teacher spoke to us individually, and she goes, look, we think the three you stole this cap and got rid of it, and we need it back. And I said, I don't know anything about that. And she goes, if you tell us, you won't get in any trouble. And I went, oh, right. I said, they took it out of his bag and threw it in the bush. <laughs> and, the <way> out. <laughs> and then, by the way, I told them, I said, like, I was like, and they were like, why the fuck do you do that? I was like, well, I was going to get into trouble if I didn't. And I didn't have anything to do with it. So why would I get into trouble for something you did? I was like, I didn't tell you to nick the cap. They were like, I'm sure I did. And it was. But I was like, well, I didn't do anything about it. You were so, a wee yeah. bastard. Yeah. Yeah. And I went to their detention and just stood out the window the whole time. Look at that. No, I, I, I would have flipped. Like, yeah. I'd have flipped on people. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I wouldn't have wanted to, and I'd have said I had a code. But then immediately, if I was told I wouldn't get in trouble for the thing, here's names. I've given I've given you more names than you asked for. Yeah. I go here's people that did it, and also that thing last week it happened. Here's a dossier I've got on that, and I'd have typed it up, printed it out at home. <laughs> I'd have a PowerPoint every week. I get a PowerPoint for the teachers. Here's called, here's who's called at crimes. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I go now. I don't know who did this one. But as you can see, I've what got you my call suspects. your man that done police six here? Did what? Police six? Keith Burnside. What was that? There was like a programme, it used to be on a Sunday. Like a crime watch kind yeah, of thing? Yeah, yeah, but it was Don't like, it. it was like the, the version of over here. So it was like lower level crime, someone like stole a uh, ferret? It, it, to be honest with you, it was still, but it was sort of like, it was more in West Belfast, mm-hmm. not police six, it was more, let's see whose uncle's on the night. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what I mean? It was like, can't believe I'm out on it. And everybody knew the crack, like what the crack was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think probably that 
one of the funniest ones was um, Sky had just came out, and my dad, B Sky B it was. Yep. And it was the wee Damon shaped satellite, and my dad got it for the Scottish football. And the news was on on the hour of the hour, and my sisters used to crack up. It was like, this is just the fucking got Sky in just to watch news on the hour of the hour. It was just like constantly on their house. But there was trouble in West Belfast, and uh, they were riding. It's like 1995-96 and I was smart enough I had brought a change of clothes with me because they would have smelled the burning off you right my man would have killed me she would have been you fucking stay away from any trouble and I was like right so I had to put it out and I was like where are you going I'm going training is training on night yes straight down to Fenty's house come on let's go do you know what I mean over to the trouble and we went over Fenty over to the trouble <laughs> 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 we were over at it and then we came back and I remember getting in the, so went to his house got changed and then up to the house my man where were you tonight and I was like just training over in the way truck like he was just staying away from trouble yeah me I went through the graveyard over that way blah 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 very good and we sit down and I remember sitting with my cup of tea and then news came on and it was like Sky News on the hour or B Sky B whatever it was and it just flashed trouble in Belfast and it just straight to Andy Town Road and I'm standing with F and Finty had a big head, right? <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't, you couldn't disguise him. He was called Hammerhead, right? I just remember my dad going, "That's Hammerhead," and there's me in my Celtic top standing in the fucking middle where fucking buses are burning behind it, and he just turned around and looked at me, and I looked at my dad and my mouth threw a cup, and fucking hit me in the fucking head with it. And I was like, fuck sick. And she was like, well, if he didn't get hit with a fucking plastic bullet, if get hit with... that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. And it can kill you. And I was like, for fuck's sake. It's a fucking cup in the head. What was the hairiest experience going to a riot that you had? Um, or was it more a case of if you were young, you were more on the outside of it, you throw the odd stone? Or I remember in, in, in Alley Town, we walked onto the main road and I remember all these fellas like in a garden going move fucking move and I was like fuck off who the fuck you just cause we're not from up here and we've walked up here and fucking next minute it was like pop, 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 pop. fucking plastic bullets and I hid in behind like an NTL box and it was just the were bounce, and I was like ah <laughs> I was like walked out into the middle of it do you know what I mean so they had been throwing fucking Patrick bombs and we're going get out of the fucking road kid and I was like Whoa, walked out in the middle of it I was just like near a fucking kilt and I just remember being behind this wee green box and it was just like ping 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 and I was going oh fuck I was squealing and then this big fucker put his hand over the wall and pulled me over and I was like thanks mate he just fucking bang he says I've about 60 fucking Patrick bombs here you stupid cunt and I was like ah and I went I'm away home it's I'm sure Hammerhead got fucking done like Hammerhead did <laughs> do you know what the mad thing about it was, I remember we turned up that night and the only thing we had was, was do you know, uh, the wee fucking water bombs you had, the yeah. balloons, filled with tomato sauce. <laughs> <laughs> In a bag, because we couldn't get petrol, your woman wouldn't sell it. So we bought fucking tomato sauce. You, you and your mate trying to buy petrol during riding season, people might have put two and two together. <laughs> You know, the girl was like, the, the carriages were closed. Right, you know, so right. it was just a girl in behind the glass and she's like, I'm not turning the pump on for you. And we were like, no, seriously, we're just, we're broke down. And she's like, fuck <laughs> off. Do you know what I mean? And she's like, we're just two nine-year-old boys that are do? broke down. And Fitty went, I know. And he went over and says, give us four bottles of tomato sauce. And we filled up the balloons with tomato sauce. And we genuinely turned up at that, like, and the amazing thing is if you had a if you had a hit someone, your mates would have turned around seeing them with red or a bit like fucking hell nice one party. Be like, no, it's red sauce. I know. You know? Look like you've done more damage than that. Jesus Christ. Enjoy out with your chips, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> That's a difference, like in Hollywood here, you know, it wouldn't be red or brown sauce, you'll be more of like your Frog your specialist condiments. Yeah, you yeah. You just yeah. had a rat just threw for a rush at them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I mean that could do damage, though. No? Fucking right. You get a for a rush from a height. And then they're like, Well, you're really spoiling us. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, would you consider going out, would you go out again just for the nostalgia or you think those days are behind you? Oh fuck, definitely not. Look yeah, back I on wasn't asking like, genuinely. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just the excitement when you're a kid, you're obviously, you know, like somebody said to me before, I can't believe you're admitting that you, and I was like, I was a kid in West Belfast and that was going on. Of yeah, course yeah, I was yeah. in the fucking middle of it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That was, you did do it, and that's saying it's right. I had panic if I thought my kids were going to it now. Yeah. You know what, way? 
your advice would just be, listen, find a good NTL box. Yes. And I bind it. Just make sure you don't get anybody caught who has all the pedal bombs hidden in the garden. Thing is, if you were doing it now, you would be filmed doing it. But then you could use that and put tour dates at the end of it. Yeah, you have seen the photograph I have, don't you? Of you and... Uh, the rat the, with the balaclava. Yeah. Just briefly, set up the context that to... Jerry Kelly had got on top of a, a meat wagon. Yeah. Trying to, like, protest, or he was trying to make a point, and, and he basically said, don't don't drive this hit towards us. And the peeler went, no, nah, I'm probably still going to drive it, like. Yeah. And Jerry Kelly was like, well, you better do it with me on the bonnet. He's played his bluff, and the guy's going, fuck that. And the guy's driven with Jerry Kelly, like a raging, as you would be, Jerry Kelly on the bonnet. So then, I see a picture of you with a knitted balaclava on on a police bonnet. So basically there was a thing happening in North Belfast and I was there and just happened to have that balaclava with me because I use it for gigs. And What the, was the thing the cab jeep, The cab jeep was said, well, I was doing the gigs on the buses so I had it in the taxi. Right. And I seen Jerry Kelly at this thing and I said to my mate, wouldn't it be dead funny if I jumped on the police jeep with the balaclava on and do the thing in front of Jerry Kelly? So I done that. That's, that's where you need to have a mate that goes, no. <laughs> I don't think I would, Paddy. So we've done it. Jerry Kelly wasn't amused, but then I. So got, you've done it right in front of him. Yeah. So he's basically there, and there was a squad of people there. There was going to be a parade. A lot of people hanging around. Police jeeps are sitting in the corners, just making sure everybody's behaving. Cameras in the top, and then the next minute I jump on the front of the bonnet of the police jeep and go pull in, pull it, and do the whole thing. And everybody laughs around Jerry Kelly. He's standing with the daggers, giving me dirty looks. And then... When you say he's standing with the daggers, your family? No, looking. Like, right. the daggers looking at me. So he's looking. <laughs> then one of the cops took a picture of me from inside the jeep. And then I tried to deny it was me. But obviously, quite clearly, you can see my tattoos. So... And then the cops sent it to you, didn't they? Well, he, he, he wanted to have a chat with me about it. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. So we went and had a chat, and then he showed me the photo, and then I went, oh, Where did you chat, just in a local cafe, or...? No, in an actual police station. In his place? <laughs> <laughs> and I had to have a legal representation. <laughs> Come on for a chat, what do you think, Grand Central? Were you... My work. And I was like, no, I wasn't there. Were you sure, and all? And I was like, yeah, no, Daphne. He's like, no, well, what about this? And I was like, oh, I had there. <laughs> that was a wee joke. Paddy tattoo for anybody who uh, doesn't know, in Irish, says, I am Paddy McDonald. It's actually Ulster Scots for Gordon, if you turn it upside down. I did tell that to somebody before, and believe me. I looked for too long, or Yeah. Is it? <laughs> you turn it upside down, it does look like Ulster Scots. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was funny. What's, uh, final question is, what's one thing you, you've done trying to be funny that you regret, like you regret it, or you went, like a prank you've tried to play, where you went, it's not really gone down the Sucking way Sucking Cass's eyeball. What? There's a wee guy called Cass, Cassidy from West Belfast and he was a couple of years younger than us and he sent this shop as ma and I was trying to be funny and there was this thing at the time where you would suck somebody's eyeball and give them a black eye by sucking it and my mates didn't believe me, no, he used didn't believe me about the famine, right? <laughs> so I says, right, well, I'll fucking prove it, I'll do it and here's me, let me do it, money is and they were like, fuck off and we Cass came out of the shop and I grabbed him and sucked his eyeball probably for too long <laughs> And Cass had this big fucking eyeball, like black eye eyeball, like it, it, his eye was fucked for like weeks. And his man and dad were like on the lookout for me, wanted to know who I was, who I was. Well, he couldn't have been. Do you know what I mean? No. <laughs> so, uh, and I felt bad about it. And I actually seen him about six months ago. He, he didn't see you? <laughs> And uh, his gay dog knew me. And uh, no, he says gay dog. Oh, it's, it's the dog talks like that. There, it's like there's that bastard there. <laughs> <laughs> you, you fucker. <laughs> He's like technically I got this job, you bastard. So fuck up. You're the only person I know that theoretically could get into an argument with a gay dog. Like I could see you a hundred percent getting into it with a gay dog. <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, no, so I've seen him and I apologised. And I, and I felt, I did felt, I felt bad about it. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Anybody that I tortured in school, I felt bad too. Yeah. As I've said, I've said sorry to everybody. There's only one person that's told me to fuck off. With the right to do it? Probably. Got him stuck with a fucking nickname for the rest of his life and he doesn't like. Fella probably fucking had to spend fortunes to come around from it. Do you know what I mean? But What nickname? 
Not Tony. Because right. he's took a part. <laughs> <laughs> Does he still get called it? Yep. Yeah. It's fucking what? brilliant. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> It's one of those things that nobody noticed it until I said it, and then when I said it, it was just unseen. So it's like, yeah, totally, 100%. So it's like a physical thing? Yeah. You fucking look like somebody. <laughs> or a girl. Um, but, um, yeah, so he's the only one, but everybody else is already like... Describe him. <laughs> we'll give it away. Um, she was a lead role in like an American TV show on Channel 4 in the early 90s. Pamela Anderson? No. She wasn't on Channel 4. She was on ITV. And I know this because I fucking run home from football every Saturday to have a wank over. <laughs> no. I'm not answering the fucking thing. <laughs> but it's not Ali McPhail, no. We'll find out. We'll find out. Google um, height of Irish people after the famine. Google our painters, coke dealers. And Google Channel 4 90s female actress. I'll put it in, but... Okay. No, don't say it then. Mike, you prepared to edit this? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not saying it. Well, he'll turn the mic down. Uh, no, no I'll down. tell you when the mics are off. Right, okay, okay. Okay. Mics are off there, Mike. Mics are off. I'll say it. I don't want to say it's going to be the tag. Go, go. Right, well, uh, we'll leave it there because I need to know who this person is. Uh, what have you got coming up? You got anything? Uh, any shows? Any... Yeah, I... When's this going out? Ten days. Well, then I'll have announced my UK dates. So going to Edinburgh, Glasgow, Manchester, Liverpool, and London. Where are you doing all those places? Or more in Glasgow. Glasgow, doing Monkey Barrel in Edinburgh, Hot Water in Liverpool, Frog and Bucket in Manchester, Frog and Bucket London, Museum of Comedy, Museum of Comedy. All right, we'll put a if if we get a link for all those, we'll put mm-hmm. it in the description. Paddy McDonald, thanks very much. Jeremy Lemelga. And yourself. Just say it. Girl, I mean in a muggle. Girl, me ugat. Girl, me ugat. Girl, me ugat. Girl, I'm starting to sound like Gregory Campbell. Stop this episode. <laughs> <laughs>